he ascended into heaven. And it is the ugliest of miracles. Most of the other miracles, something is given. Somebody is healed. Now you have wine at a party. In the ascension, something is taken away. Jesus goes up to heaven and he'll be seated at the right hand of the Father. And thanks be to God for it. It's easy to lose sight of it uh, because it, this, the day that we celebrate it in church usually falls in the middle of the week. So you might not be able to go to church. Your church might have a day for it. They maybe move it to a Sunday. That's okay. Uh, but it, it really, really matters because if you don't actually understand the ascension, church is going to not make any sense at all. Jesus ascended into heaven and it feels awful because now you have to look around and say, I can't see God. Before there were like three years during Jesus ministry where like you could point and say, he's right there. Let's go over there. I want to know where to be near God. Well, it's, it's, it's in Jerusalem. It's over that way. It's, it's out in Ida, Galilee. Go there where Jesus is healing people. And now you're stuck with me. Now you're stuck with your pastor. Now you're stuck with a whole bunch of sinners, none of whom are actually God. And it's a gift because now you don't have to get to Jerusalem to be near God. Now God is wherever his word is preached and his sacraments are administered. Now God can show up for you in your church on Sunday. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to actually recognize that God isn't a, a vacation destination anymore. He, he actually shows up wherever his word is preached, where you get to eat and drink his body and blood, where baptism is, where preaching is. God comes to you in your little church, wherever that happens to be, so that you would not be far from him. See, the ascension doesn't make God farther away. It makes him closer. God does not want to be only in one place for only a select group of people. He wants this forgiveness to proclaim to all nations so that he is promised wherever uh, these things are observed, there I am. Uh, he says, go into all of the nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching people to observe those things which I have commanded, like the Lord's Supper. And lo, I will be with you even unto the end of the age. Where is Jesus? Are you having communion? Jesus is not far away from you. Church is not a thing where you go to hear about Jesus. It's a place where you go because Jesus is there first. Like, why would you ever go to a church that God himself won't go to? Like, that, that's terrible. Why, why would you, if Jesus won't go to the church, why would you? I have better things to do. So should you. But if Jesus is there first and I have the things that, that, that are, are killing me and Jesus has the cure for them, I want to go there. If I have sin and death and, and, and flesh that is falling apart, if I am in the midst of a world that is against me, I need to run to where Jesus is so that I can have help. And because he has ascended into heaven, I know where to find him now. I go to church. I go to communion. I go hear my pastor preach to me that my sins are forgiven. And there, God is not far away. He's so much easier to find. The ascension looks like the ugliest of miracles, but it's a gift because now God, who was hidden in the person of Jesus, look, let's be honest, most people looked at Jesus and didn't think he was God, is hidden underneath the bread and the wine, which I understand don't look like body and blood. But by faith we see. By faith we see that that man walking around Galilee was God. By faith we see that God died for us and rose again. And by faith we see him for us in the sacrament and rejoice because God is not far away. He's right there for you, for all the things that are wrong. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.